Welcome to the 2018 Boston College Football Signing Day Show presented by Nissan. My name is Jason Baum. I'm here filling in for John Meter Perel as he's stuck in South Bend. Meter, we wish you were here. Uh, joining us to start off the show as we talk about 2018 Boston College signing class as head coach Steve Adazio, the first coach in BC history to lead the Eagles to four bowls in his first five years on the Heights. Coach, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jason. Good to be here. Uh, always an exciting day around the country, signing day. A uh, little bit different this year with the early signing day in December. How did that affect you guys, with, especially with 19 of the 20 guys signed, committed in December? Well, I think it's great. I mean, we were able to have that class in place before the bowl game. And I think uh, it allowed us to be targeted uh, for 2019 recruits in the month of January. Um, as a head coach, I'm on the road in January like it used to be in the old days when the head coaches could go on the road in May. So I'm able to, you know, really get around and that was valuable for us. So I think it was cost effective. I think it was time effective. And I think it, it was a positive thing. How much momentum did you guys hear, feel, see on the recruiting trail with the positive season, the program and its upward trajectory for you coaches that were on the road? What was the response like? Well, it was, uh, you know, since the minute we went on the road when the contact period started in December, uh, the buzz about Boston College was incredible. I think everyone throughout the country uh, followed our season and really saw the promise in the future. We got better each week and our young players showed their star power but we improved along the way. We had lost 10 starters, including our quarterback, but each week we got better. And I think, you know, people know what they see. And so there was a great buzz, um, you know, no matter where we went, talking about how exciting our team was and, and what a great future we have. And so that, you know, parlays itself into recruiting. Obviously the season that the folks got to see a lot of those exciting young players, but yet you were in the position to redshirt a lot of talent that yeah. didn't have to play right away. Right. How exciting is that for you to see some of those the brand Sebastians of the world, Tate Haynes that right. didn't have to play and now right. you know they get a full year in the program? Yeah, I mean there's a whole bunch of guys and I think you know that was really positive. Um, you know we're in a mix now of some guys redshirt, some don't. There's a lot of different philosophies but I think as your program gets balanced in its roster, as you get more depth in your program. You have a better opportunity not to have to play as many guys. We got into that when I got here and we're just starting now to be able to come out of it. There's so many guys, Truman Goodapple and Kavlik, as you said, those guys, you wish you never had to play John Johnson. There's a bunch of them, but you did. And so you keep going. But as we move in, in the future, it won't be quite as dramatic. 16 of the 20 players are from New England or the Mid-Atlantic. How important is that local, regional, recruiting base for the program? Well, when I came in here, I explained that. I mean, I think for any program, the five-hour radius footprint is critical, right? And I think you start there, and I think you branch out to the other things that fit your footprint. What's that? Well, national Catholic schools, whether it's in Indianapolis in Ohio, uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, in Indiana, or whether it's in Ohio, uh, Catholic leagues, whether it's in California. When we get, the farther we go away from our base, the more we want to get to like schools. So I think you know, that footprint has been critical to work inside out to the best of our ability. And, and, and it's critical for us to find the right guys, the guys that really fit and match to what, you know, our, our uh, culture is here at Boston College. And I think that, uh, you know, um, that's as the evaluation's important and then the match is important. And I think, you know, because we're a development place where we want to bring guys in, we want to maximize them on and off the field. It's been that way here a long time, and I think that uh, the, the better you stick to your footprint, the better off you are. Uh, looking at the 20-player class, 17 players were high school captains, eight players won state titles. How important is to find that leadership and winning qualities in the player when you bring them into the program? Well, I think it speaks to the character that you're bringing into the program, and I think the character is critically important. You know, when you're talking about the captains of the team, you're talking about guys that were viewed or elected as the best leaders in their programs. And, uh, and I think the more that you can put yourself around, A, high character guys, B, winners, guys that come from programs where they've been pushed and they understand the, what it takes to be in a great program and what it takes to be in a winning culture, I think that surrounds your program better. Uh, if we then just jump in, take a look at the class, yeah. start obviously with uh, David Bailey running back from Maryland. Maryland. Just uh, your thoughts on David. David is a big athletic guy. First of all, he's, what a guy. When you get around him, you know, he's got a great, 
uh, um, aura about him. Um, tremendous person uh, and, and, and great integrity um, and great family. And then you watch him athletically. I mean, he is a big dude, man. You're talking about a six foot, 240, 45 pound guy on the basketball court that you know, can move and dribble and shoot threes and you know, it speaks to his athleticism. On the football field, he plays really strong behind his pads. I think we have another big, athletic, fast running back. How exciting is to add another big, fast running back to that room where you already have AJ, well, Travis Levy showed what he can do this year. Yeah, I mean, it has yeah. to be exciting. It's very exciting. And, and I think, you know, to watch, you know, you watch the cutups and you're watching the punishment that the backs can inflict. I think it's important in style of our style of game that we have backs that can do that. I mean, Travis is, is not a small guy and he's a violent runner. So, I mean, I think we want to continue to add guys that can punish the defense. Uh, next, we take a look at Kiev Bennerman, defensive tackle from New York. Yeah. Just had 29 rebounds the other night in yeah. a high school basketball game. Uh, what do you see in the projected defensive tackle? Well, I mean, I went out and watched him practice in basketball, and he's very athletic, as you just mentioned, his ability on the court as a scorer and as a rebounder. He's a big, physical-looking guy who's extremely athletic. I mean, that's what you're looking for. I think he's going to be a great um, addition to our interior defensive front and uh, really looking forward to to, to that. I mean, size, we play in a league where those defensive linemen, we're, we're going against guys that are all over 300 pounds and, and they're athletic and, and that's what you need. And so we're trying to, you know, obviously uh, increase that. Uh, up next, another Lawrence Academy product, a place that's been very good to BC. Yep. Uh, Ryan Bitro, another defensive lineman. Just your yep. thoughts on Ryan. Ryan, we had in camp. Ryan, as we, as we did Kiev. Ryan is another big physical athletic guy. I think he's going to make an immediate impact. He's mature. He's, he's a real sharp guy. I've been coming from a great high school program, and uh, I just really feel like he'll make a quick impact for us. Um, he's a very physical guy who's very coachable. Does it help to have so many guys from one program already here at BC to maybe get a feel for the player's character or to, if he would fit in? Like Just knowing that he has some more former high school teammates here. Yeah, I think it's twofold. I think you know more about the young man. And I also think, you know, we have a great understanding of the program he comes from and who runs that, the head coach, and, and what it takes to be a part of that program. So I think that, uh, you know, it gives us great comfort to know we have a guy that's going to fit in very, very well here as well as, uh, you know, uh, being a good player. Uh, next up, we head to Indianapolis. Uh, talented linebacker Hugh Davis. Yep. Uh, your thoughts on Hugh as he comes east to join the Eagles? I mean, another highly productive guy who had a great career in Indiana and uh, played in a great high school program that's been very good at Boston College. I know the head coach there for a lot of years, and uh, we have a lot of trust and faith in him, and, 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 and Hugh is, is a real good player. Another guy that comes from just an incredible family, high character guy, great work ethic, and very productive on the football field, and coming from one of the best programs in the state of Indiana. Um, the one addition to the signing class today, cornerback Tyler Days from Central New York. What's Tyler bring to the program? We had Tyler in camp. Tyler is another um, athletic, big uh, defensive back who uh, you know can play safety, can play corner, maybe one day could even slide down into the box a little bit. Uh, he's, he's got really good size um, and uh, very, very athletic and can run. I think one of the things we've done here is we've really increased our team speed at every position. And, um, and I think, you know, you know Tyler is, is a guy that brings a, guy, a big bodied guy that can run. And that's what, that's what we want to do. We play in a fast league. New Jersey's traditionally been a great recruiting area from, for BC. This year is no different. Four kids from the Garden State coming in. Uh, first up, let's just talk about Nick Danucci, linebacker from Pope John. Well, again, another great program in New Jersey, uh, another winner, another great family, and, and, and a guy that on tape can run. You know, he can run from sideline to sideline, and, and when he gets there, he's explosive. Uh, we loved his tape and thought that he was a very, very productive guy and uh, really excited about him, bright guy, you know, and really, I think, he and his family get what Boston College's big picture is all about as well. So very, very excited about Nick. Uh, we stay in the Garden State, head to DePaul Catholic, Vinny De Palma, another linebacker. Uh, what'd you see on the tape uh, with Vinny? Rough physical player, great leader. Um, you know, dad's a coach. Um, he's, Vinny's here now. And uh, everything we thought, you saw it right from day one here. Seamless, 
I mean seamless, coming in as a mid-semester senior in high school, coming into the program and, and, and work ethic and being able to handle the workouts and just fantastic. So, How exciting is that for you as a coach to then have an extra spring practice for those mid-year guys and you get yeah. a chance to see them hit the field here soon? Well, I think it's a tremendous uh, asset for them to be able to come in here and get coached. First of all, they, they can adjust and adapt before the season to the workload academically, you know, to the adjustments. Uh, both off the field and on the field, to learning how to train, to learning the system. I think it gives you a great leg up. When you come in in, in June, it's, 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 it's much more difficult. So. We'll head back to Lawrence Academy for our next signee, uh, Finn Durstein, offensive lineman. Your thoughts on the Finn? Finn, excuse me. Well, Finn is a big, big guy. I mean, you're talking about, you know, he's going to have to hold it down to 325. I mean, he's a big, athletic guy, very intelligent. Um, and I think has a huge top end. And, uh, you know, we'd like to be, we want to be a faster team and we want to be a bigger team. And uh, I think he gives us that ability as an offensive lineman to come in here and bring that athleticism, size, and intelligence. And we'll be, uh, you know, we'll be a great asset. Up next, we go to Rhode Island, Jelani Galloway, wide receiver, multi sport, another multi sport talent. Uh, what are your thoughts when you looked in the tape with Jelani? Really good athlete, really good hands, really good leaping ability, uh, playmaker, um, great kid, um, fun to be around, committed to us for a long time, stayed committed, very faithful guy, means a lot to him and his family. So another guy that we feel is going to be a perfect fit here and uh, really help to bolster our receiver core. Uh, up next, we go to Central Pennsylvania, another uh, Always traditional power at Bishop McDevitt, home of Kobe White. Oh, we talk about Aaron Gethers, corner, uh, you know, from Bishop McDevitt. So Aaron is highly competitive guy. Dad was a great player at Penn State, and uh, Aaron is a guy that. The funny story about him, you know, we loved his tape, and I, you know, I said, well, I'm, how fast is he? And you know, I, we had no documented times, so I said, well, you know, we want to offer you, but I want you to come to camp. He, he looked me in the eye and he says, I'll go out and run right now. It was like a junior day. I said, well, you can't do that. But I said, you can come back to camp. He goes, I'll be there. I go, okay. And everything he said, he showed up to camp, <laughs> ran, hit the times, and that was it. And I, I, what I appreciated was in, in, in today's recruiting, a lot of guys sometimes, you know, it's like the combine. Like I was like, well, I'm not going to run, and I'm not going to this, and I'm not going to. He could care less. He had to ran that thing in the parking lot. Total confidence, and, and I love that, you know, real competitiveness to him. I think he's going to be a dynamic uh, player, uh, fun to be around, and, uh, and again, coming from a really good high school football program. Uh, up next, New York City, uh, Cardinal Hayes High School, Elijah Jones, another defensive back. Mm -hmm. uh, his measurables are off the charts. Just talk yeah. a little bit about Elijah. Elijah is, um, you know, you're always looking for those big, tall, fast corners. And he is uh, extremely athletic and uh, very fluid. Uh, I was watching a, uh, a tape of him running in one of the track meets. I mean, he's a good-looking guy that can go. He can fly. And he's got the size. So I think he's got an exceptional opportunity ahead of him. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys signed two quarterbacks in this class. First one, Johnny Langan, quarterback, Bergen Catholic in New Jersey. Um, what are your thoughts and what do you see from Johnny? Vicious competitor, uh, you know, wants the ball in the most competitive moments, put the team on his back kind of guy, uh, raises everybody up that's around him, wins championships, high character, coming from a great program, Bergen Catholic. Um, you know, got every intangible you could possibly imagine. Uh, another familiar uh, name, uh, Lawrence Academy product, Joey Lucchetti, another two sports star, guy that really burst on the scene. Uh, just talk a bit about Joey. I mean, I think this guy right here, you know, has a chance to be a special player. Um, he's uh, got unbelievable hands. Um, he's uh, runs great. He's going to be a big, big guy. Um, he's a bona fide basketball player. He could play Division One basketball. Um, you know, he's got a blue collar mindset and mentality. Um, I just think this kid is 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 going to really uh, explode. And his best days are ahead of him. I mean, I, I think the, his top end is huge. I think, I think he's a guy that 
going to really be good. Uh, another high school that's uh, produced a lot of great Eagles from time to time, Everett, uh, Jason Matry, cornerback coming uh, across town. Yep. Just tell uh, your thoughts on Jason. Another guy, highly competitive guy, um, you know, coming from a championship program. Uh, the guys from Everett have done phenomenal here. And, uh, you know, just speaks volumes to their, their program. And uh, we had Jason in camp. He was extremely impressive, and uh, then watch his senior season, didn't disappoint. I mean, he had a great year, so I think he'll have a chance to have a really fantastic career here as well. How important is the camp evaluation process? Because it sounds like you get a first-hand chance to really get see these guys yeah. up close and personal. I think for us, I think for anybody, but I think for us, um, I think it gives you an opportunity to project guys better um, and, and, and have a smaller margin for error when you're evaluating players. So I think you get a little better sense of their intangibles. I think you get a little better sense of their ability to take coaching. And I think it matters, you know, uh, when I was an assistant coach, as a line coach, I wouldn't take a guy if I didn't have him in camp. I mean, I feel that strongly about it. But here, I think it's, a, it's, it's critically important. And if I think if I was a young player, I'd want to be coached by the guy that I might be going with. I, I, I too would want to evaluate that, you know. I'm telling you, nowadays, you know, I mean, a lot of guys just get all of a sudden, you know, it's all trickle down. And sometimes they shy away from camp. And I'm like, you know, if you love football and you're competitive, how, you know, don't do that, you know. But people say, oh, you know, what's their surface like? And what will your 40 time be like? I'm like, don't worry about all that now. You know, worry about your ability to take coaching, your ability to get better, your ability to compete, you know. Embrace success, don't angst about failure, you know? I think it speaks to the kind of mindset a guy has. Uh, you guys dipped into the state of Texas, two offensive linemen this year. First up, Thomas Schellmeyer off a of state championship with Highland Park. I mean, you're talking about one of the, an, an elite program in Texas that won, as you just said, a state championship. This is a guy that we had in camp and uh, was very productive in our camp and didn't disappoint as he was an integral part of a team that went on and played the highest level of high school football there is. So uh, we feel like we have uh, a guy that will be an interior offensive lineman for us, a center candidate that will that, have a lot of potential. Uh, we head next to the Sunshine State, Naples, Florida, linebacker Joseph Sparacio. Uh, what does Joe bring to the table? So Joe is the son of a high school coach, um, and uh, football is very, very important to him. And... Um, he is here, like Vinny the Palm. he's here mid-semester. Uh, Joe's very explosive. He's extremely athletic. He played tailback in high school and linebacker. Um, he can flat run. Uh, he's got great measurables, great change of direction, unbelievable work ethic. And uh, I think that uh, having him here, we've watched him move around and out in the field and stuff, and everything we thought is what he is. I think he, is, he like Vinny, those, those are guys that can make impacts early. You know, they're... You know, they have a little different mindset than, than you know, plus I think they're, they're coming from football families has helped them as well. Head back to New Jersey again. Evan Stewart out of St. Joe Regional obviously played for another former Eagle there. Uh, what are your thoughts on Evan when you watch him on tape? A violent player, um, winner, uh, athletic. Uh, again, dad was a, a really good Division One player at Rutgers um, and was a coach. Um, and I, I just see a guy that has a passion for football. Uh, I think a great fit here. And I think um, we'll have a chance to uh, you know, really bring his passion for the game and the hard he plays the game into BC, which will be great. A uh, name that will be familiar to a lot of college football fans across the country, uh, John Tessitore joining us, kicker from yeah. uh, Connecticut. Just your thoughts on John and, and what he'll bring. Well, John is a dedicated, I mean, he's very dedicated to the, his craft of you know, kicking and punting. And uh, he's worked very, very hard. Um, his high school program, Choate, uh, his high school coach is one of the better coaches uh, that I've been around. And uh, he comes from a good program. Uh, he's very competitive. It's extremely important to him. He's worked unbelievably, relentlessly hard. And he has a un unbelievable passion for Boston College. I mean, he was raised as an Eagle and it uh, means an awful lot to him. So I think, um, you know, we expect great things from John uh, and, and, uh, and, and are quite confident that he'll go on and have a great career here. 
Now I have to ask, I know as Father Joe is quite the food aficionado, how was the official visit to the Tessa Tour House? I mean, it was incredible. Um, you know, it should have been man versus food. Um, the, the, not only the quantity of food, but the quality of the food was incredible. Um, so, you know, uh, the whole Tessitore family uh, enjoys great Italian food, as I do. So we made uh, a very long night of it and had a great time and had a lot of laughs and uh, really, uh, you know, look forward to uh, great things to come. Uh, up next, we head back to New York. Matt Vellecci, the second quarterback of the class. Uh, obviously, another guy with a big arm, leader. Just talk a little bit about Matt. Well, Matt is, is a big, uh, physical uh, quarterback with a tremendous arm. Very intelligent guy. Processes things very quickly. Um, is, is very competitive. And, um, you know, he's... He's got a lot of top end as, as, as a quarterback throwing that football now. He can throw it. And uh, I think he's going to have an opportunity uh, here uh, to do great things. Um, you know, uh, I would say a lot of guys in the country felt, on the road, felt like, you know, you know we got one there. So we're excited about Matt. We're excited about his future. Another guy who's real serious and real passionate about the game. And a great fit here, very bright, you know, embracing his, you know, the challenge of his education here. So really a great guy. Looking forward to getting him on campus and getting going. Rounding out the class, another offensive lineman from Texas, another name uh, football fans will be familiar with, Tyler Vable, offensive lineman from yep. uh, Bel Air. Your thoughts on Tyler? So Tyler, um, you know, comes from a football family. His dad, Mike, is the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, was a great player at Ohio State and here at New England. Tyler, you can see each year, you know, you follow him. He's, he's uh, a young guy who's, who, who's, con who's really, I think the best days are ahead. He's really, each time I see him, his body's changing. We had him in camp and he was our natural pass setter. I mean, like, which is really the hardest skill set for an offensive lineman. He's natural at it. I think he's really developing his run blocking. He's gonna be a big guy and he's tough and he loves to compete, which, you know, both his mom and his dad were real competitive athletes, and you can see that in, in Tyler. I think he's got a huge top end, and uh, I think he's going to have a great career here. I'm really anxious to uh, get him here and get started with him. I think he'll be a great asset uh, to our offensive line. You know, I like those linemen that bring an element of toughness to him and athleticism to him, and uh, I think we got that in, in both, both guys that are coming in. So, real excited about it. It must have been pretty cool. Tyler comes for his official visit with his family. The same weekend, his dad is named the Tennessee Titans head coach. Yeah. How cool was that? To, uh... well, it was pretty funny. You know, we were at dinner, and we were all sitting down as the parents, and uh, the kids were out with the, our players. And, and, you know, of course, uh, you know, Mike walks in. And I, didn't, I didn't know anything. I, and I, I was busy meeting with people, this and that. And, and he says, uh, well, you know, I, I just got the head job at the Tennessee Titans. And so... You know, and, and it, he's a pretty recognizable guy. And while we were sitting there in the restaurant, you know, at, at Lemoncello's, it, it kind of like you got two pieces to it. It was hitting. It was breaking literally as he was speaking. And he being a guy that played in New England, you had that bit of recognition. And just the fact that it was all over ESPN on taking, you know, the job, it, it was a lot of fun. People were coming up high-fiving. And, 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 you know, it was, it was pretty cool. But what was most cool about it was that with all this going on, the most important thing to him was to be here for his son's official trip. And I think that speaks volumes to what Mike and his wife and his family are all about. You know, That wasn't bigger than his son's official trip, which if you can grasp the enormity of a guy going through that process in the middle of that, but yet he's engaged in everything we're doing for his son's trip while that's going on, crazy. Steve, just overall looking at the 20 player class, how do you feel it shapes up in terms of what the program's needs were and, and how they'll factor into the program? Well, I think once again, we've, we, you know, what's critical is we've added, we've brought in guys and, and attacked some of the depth issues that we have. I think we've increased our size, our speed, and, and taking care of positional needs. And, and I love the fact that we have a bunch of guys coming in here that have high integrity, Academics and their degree is important to them, 
and they understand Boston College and what we stand for. And so um, I think when you can get those guys and they're talented, I think you can continue to build your program here. And, you know, in rebuilding this program, it's been a step-by-step -step process. And the next piece of that is getting it to where you want to get it, and then you've got to keep that thing going. You can't, you know, you can't have fluctuations. Um, uh, you've got to keep steady, hammering away, being really careful with your identification and your evaluation and bringing the right guys in here for the right reasons. And, and I think we've done a good job with that, but we have to continue to do a good job with that. And I think you keep it steady so you don't, you know, you try to avoid too many dips. And so when you have dips, what happens is you have voids in those classes. And when you, when you, when you have those voids, that's when problems occur. And, 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 you know, you can't have that. The margin for error there is small. Last, so just leave with obviously spring practice right around the corner, February 27th. Just your thoughts of heading into the spring, uh, where the team's at, and what you're looking to accomplish. Well, we have an exciting team and, and a team that's passionate about winning, about football, about being together. Um, we've already been engaged in our winter workouts and, and, and as the NCAA rules allow. And it's just a lot of fun to be around these guys. And uh, they're anxious to get going. Um, uh, they've hit it running. Um, as you said, we start spring football at the end of the month. We're in actual practice we're even before our spring break. Then we take a break and come back. And it'll be, uh, you know, an extended period of time of us all being together working on football towards a common goal. And I think that um, the injured guys are getting healthy. Everybody's doing well. Some won't be involved in spring ball. It'll give us a chance to develop others. I think we're continuing to increase our, our depth uh, and our experience at every position. And... Uh, Really looking forward to a tremendous spring and then a good summer of building, you know, physically, uh, putting us in great shape to have a, a, a start to a, a great year next year. I know sometimes fans might worry that if so-and-so is missing spring practice, but how great is that for the opportunity for someone else to get those reps, sure. to get that experience that maybe yeah. you wouldn't have planned on, but they get all that extra work? Well, you know, you look at the quarterback position right now. Anthony Brown, you know, is doing fantastic. Now, we wish we had Anthony Brown in spring, but we don't. But it gives E.J. Perry an opportunity to get a tremendous amount of work done and, and, and expedites his growth, Matt's growth, John's growth. Everybody's, you know, they, they, they get a chance. Just like uh, on the offensive line, you know, we still won't have Elijah or John Baker back for spring ball, but, uh, you know, it's going to give some other guys like Alec Lindstrom a chance to take that many more snaps. So the season was like that, and now the off season, I think we are building our depth. That's what we're doing right now. And, you know, um, that doesn't mean the other guys aren't completely engaged in, in the mental part of it, which is all the different meetings and film study that we're engaged in. So I think it's, you know, it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be great. By the time we get to training camp, you know, for the most part, we should be pretty much all there health-wise. Probably have to be a little careful with a few guys, but um, we should, you know, God willing, we'll be in great shape when we start the season and we'll be at full complement. That's a little bit of the luck of the draw, and, uh, but, but I think the more depth you have, the better you bolster your opportunity to overcome you know, the inevitable problems that will creep up. Steve, thank you for joining us. We'll be right back next with Offensive Coordinator Scott Leffler. Welcome back to the 2018 Boston College Football Signing Day Show presented by Nissan. Now joining us is Offensive Coordinator Scott Leffler. Scott, thank you for joining us. Great to be around, Jason. Uh, we're just going to go talk a little bit about the offensive side of the ball, obviously, with you. Uh, let's just start off first. David Bailey, running back from Maryland, another big body that sound, like, fits the mold for BC back. Really excited about David. Uh, Brian White uh, and uh, Rich Gannell recruited him. Uh, they went down and watched him, obviously. Uh, his football ability, but we also were able to watch him on the basketball floor. And uh, this guy is a big, powerful, dynamic back. Uh, has similar traits to the uh, the big guy that we have here in Chestnut Hill. Uh, we're not going to put those expectations on him, but uh, um, we're really excited about David. He's got great athletic ability. He's got great vision. Uh, he'll be able to run the zone play. And really excited about uh, his mitts. He uh, he catches the football quite well. And uh, he's a guy that's going to fit into that room perfect. 
He recently just passed a thousand point mark in, on the basketball court. How important is that to see a guy that could play multi sports? I really think it's important, uh, especially uh, um, at the skill positions. You always want to see these guys uh, compete, and uh, you really were able to see his, his movement. And for being such a big, powerful guy, uh, you got to see his athletic ability on the basketball court. So. We're really excited about him, and just like I said, I think he fits the mold of what we're trying to do here, and I think he's going to be a great addition to our uh, running back room. Up next, we'll go uh, to the offensive line, Finn Durstein from Lawrence Academy. Yeah, he's a big guy. He's a big, powerful guy. Uh, uh, Justin and Brian obviously did a great job recruiting him, uh, along with Coach, Adaz uh, Coach Adazio, of course, but uh, we're super excited about him. He can bend, he's powerful, he can run. Uh, we see uh, he has the ability, most high school guys, it's hard to evaluate if, if they could be really good uh, pass protectors and he, he can kick and slide very well for his age. And uh, just like uh, the running back, again, that addition to, uh, to this, this offensive lineman is really important to our room, so we're super excited about him also. Uh, up next, we take a look at one of the skill positions, John Lee Galloway, wide receiver from Rhode Island. Yeah, I like this guy. He's got uh, a really great ability to find the fats of zones. Uh, he's a smart football player. Uh, he's quick, he's athletic, and obviously the most important thing is he can catch. You know, that's the most important. Can the guy catch the football? And uh, He's got tremendous mitts. Uh, we're super excited about him. He's a super intelligent guy that we think that will, uh, uh, like all our guys, you know, we're very fortunate here to, to have players that learn the offense quickly and He'll be one of those guys that is going to be able to learn it and maybe uh, be able to contribute to our team next year. Uh, up next, one of the two quarterbacks in the class, obviously a position you know very yeah. well as the quarterback's coach. Uh, talk to us about Johnny Langan from Bergen Catholic. He is a tough athlete. Um, uh, I think he was Gatorade Player of the Year in New Jersey. Uh, he won. Uh, very super competitive. We've known Johnny for a long time. Uh, we've had him in camp since I think he was a freshman. Uh, we're able to work with him. Uh, super excited about uh, uh, his ability to bring some toughness, uh, obviously, to our room and to our team. And uh, he throws the ball well. He's athletic. He can run. He's tough. He wins. So he's a guy that you got to take and you got to recruit. So we're super excited about having him. Another multi sport uh, talent up next Joey Lucetti, a tight end from Lawrence Academy. Uh, obviously, it looks like another big, physical, athletic tight end, one of many here uh, at BC. Don't like him, love him. Um, had the uh, good fortune to go watch him play basketball. Uh, I think he's a Division I basketball player, along with being a Division I football player. He runs up and down the, the court like he uh, weighs 190 pounds. He's super athletic. He can jump out of the gym. Um, you see his, uh, his hands uh, on the basketball court. And then obviously we had him in camp and you watch his film. I think this guy is a great football player with a, a very, very good, good mitt. So uh, he's a guy that uh, uh, is going to get big. He's got a great frame and uh, Coach Leonard uh, will have a, he'll have fun developing that one in my opinion. How is it exciting looking at that tight end room as an offensive coordinator? Wow, it's, it's everything that I've ever dreamed of in terms of whenever you have those tight ends, you're able to play uh, multiple formations, not take the, uh, the tight ends off the field. It causes a lot of disruption to a defense in terms of how they align, in terms of how they decide that they're going to match up. Uh, so our tight end room, they've done, we've done a great job. Coach Adazio and obviously Coach Leonard has done a phenomenal job. Uh, recruiting that room one and two the development you watch those guys they're they are well coached and uh, uh, like all our guys are there all our guys are well coached but they they are a unique group and uh, they got to know everything they are besides the quarterback position there they have to know everything uh, they got to be able to pass protect they got to be able to run block they got to be able to be involved in the uh, in the uh, the pass game uh, the only thing that we haven't really done with them yet is hand the football off to them, but we might do that. So, <laughs> but uh, they're they're involved in everything, and they're a very very unique, hardworking group. Another room with great depth, offensive line. We go next to Texas. Thomas Schellmeyer, state champion from Highland Park. Yeah. Great high school program. Um, they do a wonderful job. Coach Allen down there has done a great job for years down there. 
we had him in camp, which is really important whenever you're evaluating an offensive lineman. If we could get your hands around them and, and have them in camp, you got a better idea and project of where they're going to be in a few years. Um, it's a guy that really can pass block and also runs off the football well. And uh, Coach Fry really likes him. We like him. We're super excited that he's uh, here at Boston College. And uh, his parents are great. He fits in our program. He fits our formula. He fits our mold. So we're, uh, we're going to have fun with him, too. Up next, we go to kicker John Tessitore uh, from Choate in Connecticut. Your thoughts on John? Um, just like any kicker, just kick it through the uprights, you know. I mean, that's, I don't know a lot about him, but I know kick through the uprights and kick it in the end zone. So he's a great kid. He's a wonderful kid, obviously. Uh, his father has great roots here. His dad's awesome. His family's awesome. And uh, he's going to help us. And uh, we're so, so excited that uh, he's coming to Boston College. And he'll do his job and kick the ball where it needs to be kicked. And, uh, and he's a kid that really fits our mold. Uh, the second quarterback of the class, Matt Vilecci from Fordham Prep in New York, uh, yeah. looks, you know, just on paper from the film, what, exactly what you want in the quarterback. He's tall. Uh, he's big. He's going to be a he's going to be a guy that I think we recruited him. He's around 200 pounds. He's currently at 215. He'll play anywhere between 230 and 240, and look like a guy that's 220 pounds. He's a big guy, you know, super cerebral, uh, very smart, uh, throws the ball extremely well and uh, you know his challenge will be coming in and learning the system and see where uh, see uh, where he's at and how he can compete and uh, always with that process you, you never know with those guys if is it going to click in six weeks is it going to click in six months is it going to take a year you know, that's the the un unknowns but uh, both quarterbacks were really excited about and um, we're able to really build some depth in that room. Whenever you walk into the quarterback room now, you walk in and you go, there's a few guys in that room that can really play. And uh, I'm really excited about them all, to be honest with you. And we'll round, thing out, round things out with Tyler Vrabel, another offensive lineman from the yeah. state of Texas. We have history. Uh, Mike and I played against each other in high school. We went on every recruiting trip since we were sophomores uh, together. And uh, it was uh, really nice whenever Mike was up here with Tyler uh, to hang out with him. It was reminiscent about the good old days, I guess. But uh, Tyler, it reminds me of his father in terms of, you know, Mike wasn't necessarily the, the perfect, perfect body type as a young guy in high school. He was young just like Tyler was, and he grew into this big, all Big Ten player, and then obviously the NFL. Tyler reminds me of the same way. He, when we were recruiting him, he was he was thin, and now whenever you see him, he looks like a Tarzan for a guy. <laughs> he looks great, and uh, really super excited because I know I know what he is. I know what his dad is, and uh, he'll come in here and fight and be really. He'll be the tough guy that we think he is. Looking ahead, just to spring ball, a couple weeks away. How excited are you? Just especially being the offensive coordinator, nine starters back, yeah. so much talent on that side of the ball. Um, what do you look forward to the most this spring? Improving. Um, if you watch us at the beginning of the year, very inconsistent, and then the light bulb went on and we started uh, to play uh, and become more, a more consistent offensive football team. But if you look at us, we've been watching the cut-ups. Uh, if we can eliminate half the turnovers, if we can eliminate half the drops, you're going to go from a, a team that improved 45 slots on offense all the way to improving into 70 slots on offense. So we have to do the little things. We got to protect the football better. Um, we showed some consistency at the end or the middle through the middle of the year to the end. Um, and if, if we can upgrade and make that huge jump that we did from the beginning of the season to the middle of the season to the end of the season, uh, we have a chance to be a fairly productive unit and. Uh, do everything in our power to uh, play within the structure of our team. Uh, if we've got to score three points to win the game, let's score three points. If we've got to score 30, let's find a way to score 30. But really playing the framework of our team, understanding that how special teams work with the offense, understand how our defense works with our offense. And I think that's the really cool place, or cool thing about our place right now is that we have a staff, a coaching staff and a bunch of players that understand how to play team football right now. Everyone's playing um, 
into it. It's complementary football. We understand how the special teams fit into the offense. We understand how we could put our defense in a bad position. And if we can do those things and 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 not be selfish and understand that the the team the team goals are way above the individual goals, we'll have a chance of being fairly uh, fairly productive. How much easier is it to have a full season under your belt of the no temp uh, up tempo yeah. no huddle offense going into the spring now in the second year of yeah being able to put that pressure on. Well, I think everything fits together. Year one, we wanted to do it. Coach Adazio and I both uh, wanted to do it, but it just wasn't the right time. We were putting in a complete new throw game. So they had to learn split spacing, timing, and that took a while. And then obviously um, the decision, which I thought Coach, we weren't gonna do it until the spring, but the decision that he made to go to it uh, before the bowl game, I thought was absolutely one brilliant. Two, it took some guts because you're doing something completely that you haven't done, and it's normally that process of going from huddle to no huddle is a six-month process that we were able to find a way to do in a month. And um, so, to, to answer your question, yes, a, a year, a year out. A year of doing it is very helpful to our, our players and our coaches, and now obviously we got to build from it and we got to play better and become consistent. And just like I said, we got to take care of the football, find a way to eliminate a few drops, make sure that we're consistent, and uh, play for the team and no selfish acts, and we'll be all right. Lastly, just want to ask you a little bit about the quarterback room. Obviously, Anthony will miss the spring. Yeah. Uh, Steve mentioned his rehab's going great, you know, everything yes. on schedule. How, how is Anthony doing, I guess, first? And then also, how excited are you for the opportunity for EJ this spring to have that chance to get so many more reps? I'm excited about, um, it's unique right now with Anthony. Uh, we have to find a way, really in all actuality, this spring and this summer was crucial for his development. Well, that was taken away. We, 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 there's, that's nor here nor there he's hurt. So we have to find creative ways to, to make up a lot of work that was needed this spring and this summer. And he's uh, been in the classroom like a madman and he needs to find ways to still lead this football team um, without participating. So it's a challenge, but uh, he's upgraded in his mentality. He's upgraded with his work ethic in terms of how to study and how to be a quarterback. And he needs to find creative ways to still lead, get his knee healthy, and then uh, when he gets back, he's got to jump on board, and, and, and he's got to improve. He's a, he's a, the quarterback room in general is a key component to our success, and um, he's got to have a really, really productive fall camp to, to uh, make up some time that was missed. How important is it then for EJ as well yeah. to get all those extra reps? Yeah, I think it's really important for EJ and Matt both um, and uh, Fadul and Grozel in that room to really expand and help her and build some depth at that position. Uh, uh, you, I've seen crazy things happen where, where a guy that you didn't think can do it, and the next thing you know he can. So we're able to get a lot of reps to a lot of different guys. We're able to build some depth, find out where those guys are at. I think all of them in that room are going to be really good players. It just matters which one's going to become the second, two, three, one, whatever it might be, how fast that guy can progress. And uh, they all progress at different times, but I'm excited about them all. And it'll be interesting to see and watch um, who kind of rises to the top. Awesome. Scott, thank you for thank joining you. us. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Coming up next, it'll be Jim Reed, defensive coordinator of the Eagles. Welcome back to the 2018 Boston College Football Signing Day Show presented by Nissan. Now joining us is defensive coordinator Jim Reed. Jim, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jason. All right, let's just start off uh, kind of looking on, uh, now go down the list of the defensive players we signed in this class. Uh, obviously a good defense starts up front. Defensive tackle, uh, Kiev Benerman. Uh, <clears throat> Kiev is a, uh, a big body type guy. Excellent student, uh, 13 plus on his boards. Uh, just a, a, a magnificent, magnificent family. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, he's also a very good basketball player. Just last night, he is a thousand yard, excuse me, thousand yard, thousand rebound, thousand point guy, which is the first time that's happened at, at his high school. But what he gives us is an athletic, big presence. 
in the middle of that line of scrimmage and, and uses his hands very well. Uh, as you watch the tape, and I guess that's probably what we're doing, you'll, you'll see him be able to rush the pass, he uses his hands, uh, get off blocks, and you'll be able to see how well he runs. I mean, he runs the court very well in basketball, and then you translate that into his uh, quickness and, and great, uh, uh, really, footwork up front, and, and he, he makes a lot of plays running people down. Is Kiev a player that could play both tackle positions? You project him more at one or the other. Where do you see him fitting in? Well, we see him almost like as a Ray Smith type guy who uses his hands very well and, and attacks the line and controls his gap and allows the linebackers to flow. Uh, but I'll tell you what, he can get off the ball just like Noah uh, Merritt and, and uh, create a lot of havoc in there. So th this is, uh, we're excited. Well, we're excited about all these, uh, th these, these uh, young men, but uh, you know, the, the size and the athleticism of Kiev gives us uh, 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 just a real good potential guy inside. Uh, a local guy is up next, Ryan Bitro from Lawrence Academy, another defensive tackle. Uh, your thoughts on Ryan? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Barry Green was, a, was a, uh, a young man that I went to school with at the University of Maine a long time ago. We won't say how long, but it was a long time ago. And uh, he called me, he said, Jim, I've got a really terrific young man here down at Walpole, Massachusetts. And I'll tell you what, I met him and you know how you look at a guy and you're like, oh gosh, I hope this player, this, this young man's a really great player. I'll tell you what, now this guy can get up, can get up, uh, has great get off off the line of scrimmage. He can use his hands. I mean, he, he has great lateral movement uh, and, and he, can, he can sack the quarterback, you know. And <clears throat> so he ended up going to Lawrence Academy from Walpole High School, but we had him up at Walpole. And this is the one, the one item I think is so important in recruiting. He was here with his mom and his dad, and, and, and uh, this is when he was in high school, and he says, Coach, I always wanted to go to Boston College. It was my dream to go there. And I said, well. And so he ended up going to Lawrence Academy, and you, you put on his Walpole High School tape, and you put on his Lawrence Academy tape. I mean, it is, you would, it is the same guy. I mean, he's up the field, really aggressive with his hands, he can, he, he, like I said, he's got that great lateral movement. He can see the ball go to the outside. He plants his foot. He drives, and it's a, he's a, I, I, I think he's an amazing athlete. I think he has an opportunity right now to come in and play. Very, you know, very similar to the way A.J. Dillon did coming out of uh, Lawrence Academy. And so we're excited about him and uh, re really fired up about him. And, and uh, I think that Ryan is going to be a tremendous player here. Uh, up next, we'll go to a position you know quite well, Hugh Davis at linebacker from Indianapolis. Hugh, Hugh Davis actually has missed a football. He just got that, I think, about maybe three weeks, a month ago, missed a football in the state of Indiana. And I've known Hugh some, from when I was at Iowa, and he was just a little guy and, uh, in the weight room. And, and uh, I was told, watch, watch, watch out for this, this young man. So he has developed into a physical, hard-charging, attack the line of scrimmage linebacker who can get back and he can play the pass. He's athletic, he's a tough, physical guy. At our camp, we have a 5-10-5 5 shuttle that we, we test that, that is a NFL testing, uh, measures the you know, change of direction. And, and you know anything around a 4-3 or 4-2 you know, is really good. This guy came in at 4-1-1. And, and so, I mean, he can move his feet, but just like Kiev, just like uh, Ryan, Hugh fits that tough physical player who will bring also a great academic credentials to the, to the school and become really a uh, great part of our like-minded community here and, 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 um, and uh, become a real good Boston College man. But we, we, we love uh, Hugh Davis as well. Uh, up next, cornerback, late addition to the class today, Tyler Days. Tyler, Tyler Days came to our camp. And what's really impressive about Tyler, there's a whole bunch of them. Tyler Days, first of all, he works an awful lot. I mean, his, you know, that's part of what, you know, his family is. Um, they're, they're, they uh, have a great work ethic. So he has a job, as well as plays football, as well as goes to school. Tyler has an opportunity to be a safety, 
or a corner. That is the type of athleticism that, that, uh, that Tyler brings. And right now, you know, depending upon, you know, where everybody, you know, ends up, he's a guy that can be a skilled guy on the outside for us. He can be a, uh, a safety. He's an intelligent player. I, I think they, they made it to the state championship and they were state champion runner-ups, I believe. But I mean, if you watch him, he's dynamic carrying the football and he's dynamic catching the football and he's dynamic in his athleticism at, at, at defensive back and he's dynamic coming up playing the run. He's a six foot, 190, 195 pound guy. So depending upon what scheme we're in and what down and distance, you might see him lined up on the second level as a linebacker as well. So he gives us a lot of versatility and, and great young man, great parents. I mean, it's, a, it's exciting that we have uh, Tyler Days. Next up, we'll go to the Garden State, a couple linebackers uh, back to back. First up, uh, Nick Danucci. Nick Danucci is, is uh, I tell you what, this, the, he, uh, he's a square jawed, handsome, hard nosed, physical guy that when you watch his tape, you, you, you just, I mean, he has great lateral movement. He, he's a guy that covers sideline to sideline. If you're going to run at, 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 at Nick, you better button your chin strap and hold on because that guy is going to hit hit you and he's going to hit you hard. Physical player, smart player, great student, comes from a tremendous program. Uh, there's just nothing but excitement about, about, uh, about Nick coming here. He's really a, uh, an outstanding, outstanding guy. Great, great character, great family. I mean, you, you know, we, we could do a half hour show on, 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 uh, on all these guys, really. Uh, next up, Vinny De Palma from DePaul Catholic in well, New Jersey. I'll tell you what now, Vinny is here already he came in january uh and first thing is that you know you look at film and you look at film and sometimes film is deceiving you know you, you they're all highlight films so I, we, we always do is when we offer somebody i always like to try to go back and watch a game to make sure those highlights aren't just a few plays that there are other plays you could put in and the consistency of effort and speed and hitting ability is on, on, a, on a game tape. And that certainly was the case. We, we, we were right on the money offering uh, Vinny De Palma. He, he is explosive. Uh, I've watched him work out. He's got great hip movement. I mean, and he, he's fast with his feet. I mean, it's gonna be exciting to be coaching Vinny. We, we, he's gonna be a terrific player here. And that we know for a fact because we've already watched him here because he came early. Uh, up next, a player from one of the most prominent high schools in Pennsylvania, Bishop McDevitt, Aaron Gathers, another cornerback. You know, Aaron was a fast player on, on tape. And everybody said, how fast is he? Now, whenever somebody says, and he's a really good player, and somebody says, how fast do you think he is? I always say, fast enough. You know, some people say like, well, I think he's a 4-6. I think he's a 4-7. Hard to judge because of the... The, uh, the talent that he's running against and the players that he's running against. So Aaron, Aaron, we were on the phone, I said, how fast are you, Aaron? You know, and, and coach, I don't run a 4-4. He came up for a junior day with his sneakers. He wanted to run, and he said, well, we can't do that under the rules. So he came to our camp, and every, all focus, everybody was like, okay, here's Aaron Gathers. Everybody said, oh, I think he's a 4-7. Oh, I think he's a 4-4. Everybody had a different opinion. We all loved him as a player, extremely productive, physical, hard, tough guy. How fast is he? Right. So then, he, <laughs> I'll never forget this as long as I live. Coach Leonard is recruiting him, and Coach Leonard says, I think he's a 4-4, and I said, I agree. I, mean, I don't think he's that fast. Well, we timed him, and, and you always know when somebody runs a great time because there'll be like five coaches there. So they run, and everybody's looking at their watch and before they're going to give a time because they'll look at each other. Then you know we ran a time. I had him in a 4-3-8. So I said, well, let me break the ice here, 4-3-8. You know, that, well, that's why I had 4-4-4-1, four, 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 you know, all like that. So everybody goes berserk and Frank Leonard runs out, grabs him and hugs him and, you know, he said, oh, you know, you're, you're. and then, so then everybody in the camp knew that it was somebody, something, he did something special. I think this player, 
this young man, Aaron Gethers, is a special talent. I think he has special speed, and I think he's going to be a special player here. Uh, great, great, great young man. People will love watching him and following him in the program. And I'm going too, too long, just tell me. Oh, no worries, not all. Uh, up next, we'll go uh, New York City, Elijah Jones, another defensive back with awesome measurables. Oh, let me tell you what. And, and see it? I don't, I don't want to sound elitist here. I, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of guys have great measurables. And, and fans, and initially, and all rivals, and 24/7, and all the recruit, they talk about these measurables and and performance and all. And what they leave, what what they leave out is the character. Of and in some players, you know, characters is uh, maybe a little suspect here and there. Every guy I mention is, it, but we've got a special guy here too. He's a little bit taller than Isaac Yadam. He's thin, he's wiry. And I tell you what, he's a hitter. And, and I think that this is somebody special that, that Coach Campanelli got to early and, and, and they, had a good, they got a special relationship. And I tell you, I'm just, uh, we're really happy that we, we've got an outstanding athlete who's tough, he's physical, just like the, you know, the qualities that we look for that we can say about all of these guys. And, and, um, and then, you know, and, and all of them is just a special category of, of character that you can hardly wait to get on campus so people can, can see and be proud of, of who we, we, we've recruited. And all of them uh, are like this. And this is going to be a special guy, just like Isaac has been a special guy for us. Yeah. Up next, another local standout from Everett High School, which is a long tradition of sending great players to Boston College, Jason Matry, a cornerback. Yeah. Uh, if you watch uh, the huddle film on Jason, what you'll see is an explosive athlete with great feet on both sides of the football. I mean, this, you know, Jason, he had, he had some great tape uh, as an offensive player as well as, uh, as, a, as a defensive back, but he falls into the same category of, of hard, tough, physical uh, athletes that we're recruiting and, and smart and heady and, and he's got great feet, you know, he can if you watch his film, he knows when he can break and, and run away from people. And he knows when he has to make a really athletic cut. Uh, to, you know, I'm from Medford, and, and it's just always great when you can get these, these, these local young men interested in, in Boston College. And I tell you what, uh, he's going to be a great player, and he's going to make a significant impact in our program right away. Uh, up next, a uh, linebacker from Florida, Joseph Sparacio. Joe Sparaccio is another player that we're, we're right on the money on, and I know that because he's here as well. He's an early enrollee, and and both of these, you know, Vinny and and, uh, and Joe are very very intelligent guys. I mean, we they go over the they came in, in fact just before I was here. It was a little late because I was just talking to them. They want to meet a little bit today. Uh, Joe's an explosive athlete. Uh, Brian White found him in a uh, small school, you know, uh, in, in Florida. Uh, his dad is the head coach and athletic director, and they came up. Marvelous, marvelous family, and, and Joe is fast, he's tough, he's explosive. When he hits, I tell you what, he, he can lock you. Uh, he's not the tallest player that we have at linebacker, but he is, he is He's a good, solid, six-foot guy who, who is, is uh, really dynamic in his movements. So we're really excited about, about Joe, and, and, and uh, athletically, he's already proven everything that we thought he was going through, uh, going through our uh, weight program and our, and our agility drills. Uh, finally, we'll wrap things up with another player, maybe could be a linebacker, could play in the secondary, one of those well, guys that can... I'm talking about Evan Stewart. <laughs> Evan Stewart fits exactly what Coach Adazio in the first uh, part of when, when he asked the first evaluation of ability is, is he tough guy mentally? And he is that. Now, you watch him. He can play a multitude of positions. I mean, he could be 
This is all what I know about him. He is tough, physical, and he can run. He's not afraid to hit you. Uh, he moves extremely well. He could be a strong safety. He could down, come down and be our Sam Matt Milano type of player at Sam Backer, who, who, who we like to uh, see out in space, to be able to cover and also to be able to play uh, the run. Uh, or he can be an inside player. I mean, he is uh, he's just a, a specimen of, of, of hard-nosed talent that we, that we look for inside. Um, so when you think about Max Richardson and you think about John Lamont and you think about uh, Connor Strahan who's coming back, that, I want people to think like that when they think of Evan Stewart. That is the type of, of uh, player that, we are, uh, that we're talking about. It's always hard that people want to judge recruiting right away. You really can't till two, three, four years down the road. I thought one thing that stood out this past year with so many injuries, especially on defense, it was a testament to show the recruiting paid off with so many guys that had to play. Not only did they play, they played extremely well. Right. You see, but that's part of what, what Coach Adazio's uh, thinking is when we, when we recruit guys. He always is telling him, you're one sprained ankle away from being accountable, not only to the football team, but to the program, the entire program, which has interest of millions of people. So that, you know, and, and, and I think that, that, that that's said all the time in our team meeting. We always certainly say it in unit meetings, and it goes to our individual meetings at all. Like nobody ever heard of John Lamont except in East Alamance, you know, North Carolina, where he's from. And Max Richardson expected to play, but I'm not so sure he's expected to start, be, you know, because he had Connor Strahan in front of him. But they all practiced, not just that. You practice with intensity, but they all attack meetings with great intensity. And, and that's what you have to do to be able to get ready to have a successful rep, you know, on the field. So Max played great when he went down. You, nope, you, you, it's not part of it's part of football that you say, "Oh, that's too bad." But you can't dwell on it. Who's the next guy up? And that's John Lamont. And if anybody ever said that John Lamont was going to have 12 tackles in the in the uh, in a pass breakup in the uh, in the uh, Florida State game, you know, back in August, nobody would no one would believe that. But he did, and 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 that's credit to, to him for listening to the message from, from the head coach down through, his, his, uh, through the assistant coaches. You have to be ready. And, uh, and that was a testament to not just us, but Hamp Cheevers, okay, inside, secondary to Hamp Cheevers and, and, and everybody on our team. When someone goes down, someone has to be accountable for the success of the ball club. Last thing, I just wanted to talk to you, the coach. Uh, spring practice starting February 27th. What are you looking forward to most? What do you want to hope to get out of the spring? Mm -hmm. And then also getting so many key guys back. How exciting is that for you to have the Conister Hands of the World back with us for another season? Well, <clears throat> we got to make sure that they're totally healthy. They come in, and we've got to keep developing the younger guys. Uh, we have to. We had 47 sacks the first year, and we didn't hit that number last year. So you've got to give people credit that now that they have seen what we're doing and they make adjustments. So we have to find a few different schemes to be able to, in third down, get to the passer and not get ourselves hurt in the run game. Our biggest runs against us this year were, and when we were in third down, it was past, in the past, Louisville, uh, Notre Dame, it certainly is the one that comes out in my mind. So we've got to kind of massage things around a little bit and, and, and fit our athletes to our scheme. And then we got to, we've, we've got to rep it, get good at it. And everybody's got to believe it. And then we've got to uh, uh, make sure that we're experts in what we do. And finally, how, how proud are you of all the linebackers in the room last year to have so many guys go down and step up, even – Someone like Davon Jones starts the year at running back. Last couple of games of the season, he was all over the field at linebacker. Just uh, the overall depth and quality of that room for you as their coach. I'm just going to tell you this: that 
that uh, when you when you talk about BC men and what they're supposed to stand for, we hit the definition of that in the linebacker room because the guys did what we asked them to do and that they just didn't do it well, but they did it in an outstanding winning way. Uh, Max Richardson first with Connor. Uh, and if you know Connor, Strahan, Connor doesn't want to let anybody get, take another rep only because he wants to make sure he knows what he's doing. Uh, very admirable quality, actually. And so we had Max fill in, and then John. Uh, and then when you bring Davon in, I mean, Davon's a tailback. And, you know, and then he goes to play linebacker. And I'll tell you what, without him, it's a much closer, closer Syracuse game. Uh, and then he had some really dramatic hits in that Iowa game as well. So that, you know, it, it, it should, but it's a testament of what Boston College football should stand for, which is high energy, performance, and football IQ, football intelligence. And that's what we demand of our players, but that's what they want to do. And what happens is when everybody's uh, of the like-mindedness that we ask everybody to be, then you end up with performance and winning. And I think that's what's happened with our entire program and, and, and certainly in the, uh, you know, in the linebacker room. There was a lot of sleepless nights, I want you to know, in that linebacker room with the linebacker coach. A lot of sleepless nights, of which, if I believed everything I just told you, I would have slept like a baby. But until you can watch them perform in game conditions the way they did, uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was pretty amazing to watch. Well, Jim, we appreciate the time. Thank you so much, and uh, we look forward to uh, spring practice getting going here in a couple weeks. Good. We look forward to spring practice as well. Thanks, Jim. You bet. We will be right back to wrap things up for today's Boston College Football Signing Day show presented by Nissan. Thanks, and that will wrap up today's Boston College Football Signing Day show presented by Nissan. Be sure to check out our next football broadcast on Saturday, April 14th, with the Jay McGillis Memorial Spring Game from Alumni Stadium. We look forward to another exciting day of BC football. Go Eagles!